And we're I online. He, I thought he crashed there. Yeah, for a minute I oh, thought that was <laughs> some personal crash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just an emotional one. Anyway, uh, hey there, ViewTubers. Welcome back to the Post Analysis Hangout with your host, Maxwell Starr. Not much of a host. And not much of a crew. Actually, the crew's better. Uh, we got Lee, we got Ewart, we've got uh, Greg, and we got Ashley. What's everybody drinking tonight? Well, I was drinking this beer, although we took so long to go online that now I have to get another one. But I just want to mention it because it's drinking? from yeah. Butternut Butternut Beer and Ales, which Joe actually predicted. I, I got my dad brought me a twelve pack from the states. Uh, Joe predicted it wasn't particularly great beer, and to be fair, it's not. This is probably one of the better ones, though. And this is their Heine. Oh, you probably can't see, but it's called their Heine Weiss. Heine Weiss. Like a, yeah, Heine cool. Heine Weiss. That's like a bum wheat beer, I guess it is. It's, mm. it's a farmhouse ale. It's it's, it's a little probably. bit little bit too sweet, wheat but it's, it's actually <clears throat> yeah, but it's actually not a not a terrible wheat beer. Um, yeah, and I'm enjoying it. But I now I've finished it, so I got to go get something else. Also, this <clears throat> this chat is brought to you by Henderson Brewing, who furnished this wonderful headband I'm wearing. Oh, okay, Greg, Greg on this chat is brought to you by. Anyway, uh, Ashley, and every, what do you? And every every time in the comments you say "fuck you, Nick," they'll they'll give Nick five cents. So please go nuts. <laughs> it's like it's a super a chat. If it ain't terrible, chat with insults. Anyway, uh, Ashley, what are you drinking? I am drinking Toronto's finest steam whistle. Uh, oh, oh, well, it's better oh, than the Car- I guess it's better than Carling Black Lager. I want a steam whistle now, and I've got. Some. You know what? I hey, you know, I'll I'll stand behind my my Carling hey. Black Lager or Black Label Lager. Yeah, I, w- I want the Carling Black Lager. That might be interesting. Yeah, yeah, I said that wrong, and yeah, it actually does does sound a little bit more interesting. Like, yeah, the uh, difference is steam whistle is an easy nine out of ten. Easy nine. This, out of 10. this is a steam whistle. Oh. A steam whistle fresh. As, as Redbeard would love to have his, his fresh pilsners and lagers. Of course, the the rate that Carling beers goes, it's probably a uh, Carling black lager would just be Carling lager with with food coloring added. Wow. Hot I don't think I don't think, any of us, Harsh. I don't think any I don't think any of us were that down on Carling, Nick. Jesus, Jesus. throwing Jesus. shade at Carling. No, throwing shade. Like kicking a crippled child. Throwing. <laughs> throwing. <laughs> Throwing shade like a dozen beach umbrellas. Anyway, uh, you are you drinking water again? I'm drinking regular curling. Oh, <laughs> oh so uh, old Vienna. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <coughs> no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, insult my taste buds that way. Yeah, I'm drinking water. Yeah, well, it's still close to curling. Yeah. But uh, and Lee, you got anything more interesting on tap? I'm drinking Spindrift Coastal Lager. Yeah. Always a good choice. Man, I always just... fight fucking lagers and whatever pumpkin beer. Uh, fucking hey, I have, lager I, have, drinking. I have the quality with mine. I, I'm cracked open the Tusket Falls smoked kayak. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see Which... they're not hanging people on that one. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> they're not lynching a motherfucker in that thing. That's nice. Popular. Uh, oh, racial atrocities. Popular. That's hilarious. You were. Oh, oh yes. my god. Yes. Yeah. And actually, I have a can of the uh, the red IPA too. Not not the hanging oak version, but uh, the what it's called now. Like, are they, are they uh, hanging a, a bald Rocher or, or something? A bald redhead with a long beard on it. Like that. I'd be in favor of that. Wow. Kind of yeah. Yeah. Oh. You're really bringing us down here. <laughs> yeah, let's not go there. It's all right, all right. So uplifting. <laughs> I'm full of oh. positivity today. What can I say? You, re- you realize if you draw the lines correctly, his beard is an upside down triangle. <laughs> is this oh. true? I, I, I sorry, I'm in a bad mood today. I, I read the op-ed in the uh, New York Times today, so I'm railing against. Uh, society what, what? <laughs> never mind never mind Ramble, hey, you gotta save current affairs man you gotta save current affairs anyways moving along you're talking about the uh the thing that was in new york times today yep or is it new york anyway times it's poli- yeah. politics politicking yeah i got very hateful with the u.s today but anyways, yeah 
I'm taking it out on you guys. I, I, I shouldn't. I apologize. None of us here are Americans. I don't know why. I know. Yeah, but you just, you just Where's Joe? Okay. You were this. I do. I do need. To, I do need an American in the chat just so I can lay into him. Or Redbeard. One of the, one of the, two. <laughs> <Or Redbeard. laughs> the ginger will do in the pitch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> any, any ginger. Bring, bring, out bring the me the ginger. <laughs> any ginger and or American. As long as it's not Rod. We, keep, we can't lay in on Rod. Why not? He's too nice. Ah, uh, fuck. Oh, Rod, he's, he's also Rod's not nearly nice ginger enough. No, he's, he's yeah, that's true. true. He's... Yeah, I'll yeah, find. We, I'll, I'll, we don't I'll find him over him. sympathy. I'll find him. I'll find a spot, and I'm gonna. I'll go after Rod. Well, you, you you do have drunken one in the chat, so you can lay in on him. And yeah. Eric Gilbert is oh, drinking cowbell. Kelly's contraption. Drunken one, back again. Drunken one, drunk is back. Tell of friends. Drunken one, drunken one, drunken one. Oh oh. Drunken drunk one, drunk again. Oh wait, oh wait, oh wait. Eric Gilbert's Drunk having a Cowbell Kelly's them. contraption Hefeweizen. Jesus, that's a long name for Hefeweizen. Sounds like shit. Cowbell Brewing. Cowbell. Ginger would be. Now I'm gonna preferred. have a Miller High Life because why not? You know what? I, I you know remember we had that review. I I've had a few since then. I actually really enjoy that. I'm almost ashamed uh, to say. Which one? Tr Drunken one says like he he'd be the American ginger. Thanks. All right, step up to the plate. Get into the chat and take your lashings. What the fuck? Can't really go. Can't really lash out anybody in the, in the in the comments because they're all useless twats. I mean, I did not be acknowledging <laughs> anybody. I can't lash out at anyone in the comments because they're all useless twats. By the well, way, did I tell you? Did I tell you how much I fucking hate raining on your parade? Fuck that guy. I didn't. Well, thank God, God everyone. I don't, wanna, chat don't make it personal. Twat. Ellie. I'm I'm doing I, hate, I, hate, I hate everybody in the chat equally. No, you don't. I gotta say, I love that Ewer is a little older and he uses the word twat because young kids nowadays do not use the word twat nearly enough. They should use it a lot as a pejorative. It's, it's, it's like, really. it, is a great, it is a great word. Nowadays, everything's cunt this and cunt that, but you know what? Bringing the word back. It's an angry word. There, That's there's, such more an angry word. Of, there's more to vaginas than just cunt. It depends, yeah. though. Like, if you're in Britain, the word cunt is like not an offensive word. It's like a... Well, it is an offensive word, just not in the sense that you're it's, thinking It's of. really offensive to say cunt if you put it with feckless. You feckless cunt. I always think it's insulting when you use the word sloppy with cunt. Women don't seem to like that. You sloppy, unclean what, 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 cunt. What, what, what's wrong with a sloppy cunt? You want it kind of... Anyway. No, you mm. kind of want it like right. at least symmetrical and not kind of all over the place. You got a little bit of. Well, I wasn't thinking here. that way. I was just like a, li wet. a lip, a lip kind of out of place well, here. In that case, oh, that would be a bent <laughs> cunt. That would be a sloppy cunt. That would be a bent cunt. A bent cunt. That's a, cunt. It's, 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 that's a weird angle. Yeah. It's no longer an upside down triangle. It's stupid, crooked, cro crooked twat. Twat. Crooked twat. Twat. I can't hear you. I don't know about you guys. This conversation is making me horny. Uh, no. Everything makes you horny, Greg. This is true. Not in the slightest. Thanks. Uh, Eric Gilbert saying that the uh, Cowbell Kelly's contraption Hefeweizen is salty, oddly enough. Ugh. The oh, drunken one a... says, So scare all you hippies! Well, he said he's the American ginger. Well, I wouldn't be the first Nick Lowe to make an American squirm. Oh, Jesus. Uh, that's a reference American, to a song. That, a reference to a song that I thought maybe Lee would get. Is that the Nick Lowe record? Uh, I wasn't listening. Figured. Oh, I, I, American ginger is uh, one of those two wrongs to definitely definitely don't make a right. Right, unless they're female. <clears throat> Debatable. Yeah, speaking well, Lee, 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 it's open to questions. So. Hey, Lee. Speaking of uh, redheads, the do um, you follow WWE still? Yep. What's the, what's her name there? Oof. Um, yeah. Becky Lynch. Yeah. 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 
Oh my. She can put me in a couple holds. Mm-hmm. 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 What's this link? Mm-hmm. Better be good. You better not be fucking. It's not. It's not that good. You better not be fucking with Lee. No, it's just explaining a bad joke that I came up with earlier. Oh God. Okay. Yeah. He's got the same name as you, Nick. It's all yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Well, whatever. Anyway. Jesus. What's this? Joe is in the comments. Uh, Lee, I'll get you to get that that one. He said, I missed uh, BA 101. Did Nick fuck up the history again like the useless twat that he is? <laughs> no, I think he got it pretty much correct, sir. At least we can tell. And at I mean, least he, you know, he, wore, he wore a proper uniform. Yeah, Hop yeah. scene didn't come in and correct him, so I assume everything went well. I'm sure well, the, beer, the beer's not British, so I probably won't get corrected by him. Oh man, there's some fucking beer tube beef going on here now. Jesus Christ. Yeah, beer tube beef. I, no, I got nothing against the red hop scene. I just thought it was kind of douchey to come out and say that. Anyway, whatever. It's over. You, Royal, Mr. Hopsine, you should apologize to Nick and possibly send him a picture of your penis, and that'll make no, it better. No, you can send Greg a picture of your penis. I'm sure he enjoy that. You can Greg, send it to me, Greg and I will, forward it to, I will forward it to Nick. Because Greg's you, you been asking me for it, years, yeah. and I'm not going to send him a picture of my penis. Nick, you don't have a camera big enough to send a picture of your penis. Let's be honest. Yeah, you need a wide-angle lens and get back far enough. You need somebody to take it from, like, 60 feet away. You need one of those cameras with the option where you can do the full 360 thing around or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like a Rico Theta with the like the round lens on the front, yeah. Sure, Fish eye. The, um, yeah, the, the you know the cameras are used to uh, to make photographs faking the Earth being curved. You know. Oh God. Um. Let's see here. Uh, Joe agrees Becky Lynch is fantastic, no doubt. He says, Nick, and bad jokes? No, never happens. And Eric Gilbert says, the Brewers retail beer selection in is garbage. Where's that? Oh, at, um, at Cowbell? It's, I don't know, I miss something. I guess, I'm, I assume he's talking about Cowbell Kelly's. Um... And and Joe says uh, he thought Carling was only British, never was Canadian ever. Well, uh-huh. Cowbell has an IPA, a Boxing Brewing, which came out probably about nine months ago. It's not that bad. It's pretty good. I'm trying to remember, I had something with Cowbell and, once. Uh, they had uh, their uh, their Kolsch. Uh, shit, the hell is it called? Absent Landlord. That's all right. I mean, it's Kolsch. Kolsch is Joe would probably like it. I have had a beer from Cowbell. I'm just looking up what it is. If their if their slogan oh. is if their slogan has anything of, around the, the phrase needs a bit more Cowbell, I'd say boycott that fucking brewery right away. Oh, come everyone on. needs a little more Cowbell. I had Doc Purdue's um, uh, Doc Purdue's Bobcat. Yes, uh, last I, year. I like that actually. I like that. It, it's like a, it, it, that's a red IPA, right? Like, mm, well, it just says, you know, just American amber. It probably is more like a hoppy amber. Well, I it's, guess I guess American three amber and a half, apparently is. Uh, yeah, I, I, I guess I guess American amber technically would be like red IPA at this point, really, when you think about it. Yeah, American anything is is fucking IPA. Yeah. It says, West Coast American I- APA. American Porter. Uh, it's a hoppy porter. American Stout. It's a hoppy stout. You know, it's like fucking American anything. American antifreeze. Hoppy <laughs> The black label's still trying to come back up. <laughs> mm. All right, so that's what a that's a Rico Theta camera. Kind of got the. Two fisheye lenses and it does a three sixty degree cat image and process. Anyway, whatever. Nobody really cares, but yeah, that's what uh, like people use to 
take pictures for like Google Maps and shit. Oh, cool. Not not the one that they'll use for um, like for a drive, but if you ever look at Google Maps and you see like a small dot and you can drop on drop a pin on it and you can see the view from there. Yeah, those are yeah. all pictures taken with this side of thing. Yeah, if you go to those places where like you know you can only take certain pictures, otherwise if you go to any other region, like the government will murder you, or the place is so desolate that you'd probably die if you tried to stay there and take pictures. So those. It is kind of fun sometimes to go go through Google Maps and like find weird places in the world where they have been, where they've only been like on a one little area of it. Like there's, like actually you just go like the fucking Sable Island. There's like I think maybe like two points on it or something where you can actually see Google Map pictures. And... Oh, that'd be cool. I remember I remember looking like I was looking at like um, they did uh, like somebody had done pictures like that on like Easter Island and. Uh, uh, other islands that are like in the, in the mid Pacific, like Polynesian islands. I thought it was kind of cool, like dropping a pin down there and then being able to look around this place I would probably never go to. Mm -hmm. Just not neat. probably, most certainly never will. Yeah. But I mean, you know, if you take a boat out in a storm off the coast of Nova Scotia, you might end up on Sable Island, shipwrecked. It's going to be like, it'd be like the Nick family Robinson. Big you have to make it like a. You'd have to make a fucking jungle treehouse and um, befriend the apes on the island. I think there's apes on the island. Is there? Oh no, it's horses, right? <clears throat> I imagine there's probably <laughs> apes. <laughs> apes. Oh, you, you just you just, you just assume there's there's like some sort of ape creature on every deserted island. Well, here's a that's... look at Sa here's a look at Sable Island. Yeah, there you go. See, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, cool. You can actually, like, walk across it. It's not just grass. Was that a yeah. saltwater stream running through it? Oh, let me go over there. It's neat that you can even do this. I like uh, Isle, Isle Hoot in the... Uh, oh, in uh, the, uh, the bay. In the... Yeah, in the bay where they had... I, I, I did the tour once. Almost fell off the fucking cliff. Isle of Ho? Sounds safe. Yeah, it's like, you know, they just walked us right... Like, the path that they walked us in, it, at one point, it hugs the edge of the fucking cliff so close, and they don't have any rails there or anything like that, because, you know, erosion would just take them away in a couple of years anyway. So <laughs> fucking... No one, no one mentioned, hey, maybe watch your step while you're walking up on this fucking cliff. I'm kind of curious. Do they even have like like? There's. I'm pretty sure that's Ho right there. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I love. I always heard it referred to as Isle of Ho, like Ho, not Hoat. There, but... there were no hoes there. I, I can. Uh, you can attest for that. I can attest testify that. But I like the uh, the salt water. Uh, they have the little salt water pond as well. I was gonna say yeah. It, oh, that, this like right here. Mm -hmm. Small in right, lake. It's all kinds of it, it captures uh stingy little jellyfish. Oh lovely. Oh neat. So, sounds like a great place to just, visit. Just stick your foot in. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then if you go you go on like the other side of it, there's all kinds of fucking uh, seals and sea lions or whatever the fuck fucking hanging out on the beach. Whee! Hey look, it's Earth. Yeah. Earth Earth decided to join the chat. All right, hey, you, you don't have to keep running the joke into the ground, Barry. All right, no, I just look for something. Oh yeah, like something. <laughs> Joe says, "Sable Island is Brock Lesnar there to defend it with mild enthusiasm." <laughs> WWE joke. Ooh. Yeah, the joke was shit. Lame. And then Earth is in the chat. Imagine that, he says. Is he really? That's awesome. He <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's already been on the show. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, I thought this one was kind of cool right here. Because um, you can actually go visit uh, Midway. Like you know where the battle battle of Midway was? Yeah, you actually go see the uh, 
like go uh, run around on the run the runways using Google Maps. I thought that was kind of that was kind of cool. Yeah, if the Japanese had that back in World War II. Yeah, right. Prepare for takeoff. All right, that's enough for now. If you if you actually uh, fun fact, if you actually look at Google Map right now, you can actually see my mother in, on Google Maps. What at, at your parents' place? Yeah, you can see my mother. You can see your mama. And it's not a your mama so fat joke. I'm just saying you can't. Yeah, see I wasn't gonna say. I wasn't gonna say anything like it was like everybody's seen your mama. Where's Greg <laughs> when you need him? Here he comes. Yeah, where is Greg? <laughs> hey, it is another neat one. One more, and like you go to Easter Island, you can actually go see like the the statues and shit. Are those the are those authentic statues or are those like made up ones because they don't look like the big fucking ones that are out in the Is that like just some sort of tourist made up thing or I think that's are you sure, that, are you sure uh, that's fake statues Nick? No, I, I think that's actually how they used to present them. Like they were hmm. they're because uh, 'cause I'm used to just seeing like the big motherfucking statues like placed around the rolling hillsides or whatever kind of thing. Yeah, and it all depends on where about you go in the island because it's they're they're all over the island apparently. I'm trying to find find some of them. I can't say that artist is terrible. He didn't diversify a lot. Yeah, right. Just keep making the same fucking statue. They probably get like a C minus in art class. Oh, uh, Roger J's in the chat saying, cheers, guys, just stopping by as I am out drinking in Chicago. Oh, nice. Rod J? Yeah. Where, where, where in Chicago is he? Let us know. Being in Chicago, we hope you're not a victim of gun violence. I'm going to stop at New Market Mall. <laughs> Rod says, uh, might go on a tear at the hotel bar. Oh my God! Please don't. Chicago is such a great city. Why would you stoop to a hotel? No, he literally means Chicago. he's going to meet murder capital of the USA. Uh, he literally means go. he's going to find a girl at the bar and tear her. There's oh, more of the. Uh, it's kind of neat. Anyway, um, get the idea. They're coming for me. <clears throat> what did you do this time, Greg? Hmm. It's usually a combination of things. Combination. Jesus, Nick, take it easy. You're gonna break that glass there. I'm in that techu, man. Jeez. Wow. Right. Nick, so Nick's, angry. Nick's rough. I built up trait money. I like it rough. Don't be rough in the techu. I have more than one. Oh wow. I don't own a single Teku. Is that embarrassing? Yep. All right. Which one should I drink next? The Muskoka Salted Caramel Truffle or Tom Waits? Uh, Tom, Tom Waits, because stay away right. from the Salted Truffle. Really? Why is it? Is it bad? Is it? It's what's not the, good. What's What's the date on that? Uh, it's, it says freshest by June 6th. I forgot about it. So Yeah, I, I was, was going to say, I think they only made it once. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not sure if I'm going to drink it, if I, if I want to drink it or not. Well, it's only going to get worse from here on in, man. For yeah, science. Actually, it actually made a, a slight puking noise there. I think that's all the... <laughs> that's all the well, indication no, I really you, you, really you want to drink it, but you want to drink it after you drank a bunch of other beers. That's true. That's Rod J. Rod J says he's going to Lag Onidas tomorrow. Ooh. Interesting. Lag Onidas. And Eric oh, Gilbert says he's moving on to Little Beast's La Petite Duchess. I don't know. Is is he still moaning and groaning about the fucking black label, or is he moaning? And no, he's moved on. He's he says he's gonna get the get rid of this shit beer taste. Yeah, which <laughs> beer taste? Which one? the the Carling, I assume. Oh, or oh, no, the cowbell. Yeah, but he was saying the Carling was coming up as well, so it might be a combination oh, of them. Two. 
I like the, I actually like the cowbell boxing brewing. I enjoyed that. Anyways, had it. I already mentioned it. You're you're like five minutes too late. So. Hey, <sighs> shut it. Twice. No, you shove it. <clears throat> I was I was busy I was busy Excuse doing me, what? I was be, busy being a homebody what? taking care of some shit. Hey, what? 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 Hear me now? Right, Brum brum. Hi, hi everybody. Hello, Jamie. Hello. Hello, Jamie. Oh my God, okay, you, you know what? Um, I need to apologize to Jamie because I did see the Norm Macdonald thing jump up like five minutes ago and just totally forgot about it. <laughs> fucking asshole. I actually thought it was Norm Macdonald. Hey. <laughs> hey. Hey. Hey, 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 Norm is Norm is the best. His delivery is like the this is absolute killer. He's not better. One hundred percent. I love one of the roasts where he, he he just did like really corny corny fucking jokes at a roast. He didn't do like any offensive jokes at all. Yeah, it was so awesome. Everyone was like, they didn't know how to fucking react to it. I was just laughing my ass off though. I was like, fuck man, he's just owning this whole fucking room. I think well, Norm has become that in the last I'd say five ten years has become more of not a shock comic, but he definitely comes out to more to agitate. I mean, he's he, transgressive, he, is what he is. Yeah, it's not like he he wasn't like in the beginning. I mean, he was he would tell his that he would do his stand up, but it was like he was delivering something. But now it's like, man, everything, all the stories are more about him being totally out there versus mm-hmm. like the subject matter. You know, he's just more he's on a different wavelength completely from everything else. Everybody's like, what? And that's the and genius of it. Well, no, it's yeah, actually he's, funny too, you know. Yeah, he's he's like Kaufman in a way, except for he has better jokes. It's like yeah. he, he fucks with the audience, but he still has jokes. That's, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I would say even more so in the audience. I mean, if he's on with anybody else, he just completely fucks with their complete yeah. reality at that time, which is awesome. Except I don't think it will feel dated like Kaufman. I don't know. I just no. I, I can't watch it. It doesn't do anything for me. Yeah. No, maybe I hear you. born in the fifties, maybe, but the same thing with really old comedy like a lot of people looked up to lenny bruce but if you like look up oh lenny comedy, bruce is terrible mm-hmm. but he was apparently groundbreaking but yeah no he, he really wasn't though <laughs> he, <laughs> he oh he's just a white guy who talked jive that was that was his whole shtick basically well dolomite yeah. was way rudy ray moore was way funnier yeah but I mean, yeah, but no, I mean, in terms of at that point in time, they're not timeless comics for sure. It's kind of like, even I, I dare I even say Richard Pryor, who is, I, you know, he was groundbreaking because he talked like, yeah, about all his issues and all of other stuff and with complete vulgarity, which was, yeah, it was a game changer. But now everybody talks like that. Yeah. So it's, is he really that much of a genius? Nah, I mean, he was very truthful. And he was out there, and it shocked a lot of people. So it's good to stay in the test time. Like Lenny Bruce will always stand up as a game changer at the time, but is it timeless? No. Whereas I'd say even guys like uh, fucking um, oh fuck, I mean Norm, eh, debatable. But uh, what's the guy? Oh my god, it's killing um, me now. Uh, uh, Te- Teku Murray, timeless. Yes, yes. <laughs> Hunter Murray is not a timeless fucker. Yeah. I'd say Carlin uh, gets pretty timeless once he switches his act over to, you know, he stops wearing suits on to the, the Tonight Show and <laughs> shit like that, and becomes like counterculture fucking comedian instead. I think he works pretty well. Uh, yeah. Cosby, if you don't read the news past like 1990, <laughs> timeless. <laughs> Hey, Cosby is innocent until proven guilty. Oh, shit, he was proven guilty, wasn't he? Yeah, oh, shit. Pretty much, yeah. He's fucked. I would say Rickles is pretty... 
classic. Oh, cool. oh Don Rickles always works. It, yeah. it, it, it universally works. There's two YouTube channels. Uh, one is called I'm Not Norm, and the other one is called I'm Not Don, and it's just all Norm videos and all Don Rickles videos. Both like, like check them out. It's amazing yeah, stuff. Yeah. They're, they're probably my two. As far as comedian uh, videos on the internet, I'm just going through both of those. What, uh, what I like most about what I like about most about well, the, the the stuff I like from Rickles the best is when he was on like the talk shows and he was like just taking the fucking piss out of the fucking <laughs> yeah. rap especially yeah. on Let Letterman when uh, mm -hmm. he he pretty much shits on Paul the whole time. Yeah, Paul Shaker, which is oh yeah. Just like when he raises his eyebrow and looks over, it's like he turns his head like, what in the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have to say anything, just like his eyebrow, like, what the fuck? And then he'll say, obviously, he'll say something derogatory about one of the band members or something like that. Yeah. And he just he just turns back, eh, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I, think, uh, I think Rodney Dangerfield fucking holds up, too. Yeah... Yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, I mean, his jokes are simple, but I think I think his delivery fucking holds yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, his delivery. <laughs> God damn! <laughs> the it's, sound from the street is better than my sound. Period. My audio. I that thought was, that was that wasn't uh, loud at all. I thought that I thought that was sound waves type five right there. He just said. <laughs> I mean, maybe maybe I'm old school too. I don't know, or, and I don't know if he's timeless. But I'm a huge fan of Gilbert Gottfried. I just yeah. love. Oh, he's funny. <laughs> he, 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 he is. He is funny. Yeah. His you delivery is just like I just. You ever you ever see the uh, the, the college humor uh, skit on him reading Fifty Shades of Grey? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's <so> hot. <laughs> just the disgust on his fucking face. You know, his, the usual look on his face because it's yeah. so squinty and weird, but. I don't think it's disgust. I just think that's like that's just happy <laughs> face. Him, you know. I I haven't watched the whole thing, but I know uh, Norm Macdonald's. Uh, he has he had that talk show that he had on YouTube. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure there was an episode with Gilbert Gottfried, which was probably hilarious. But I I don't know. I haven't seen it. Yeah. Have you guys ever watched the movie The Aristocrats? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. I what? love that. That was so was it? funny. It, it's it's a documentary about this one inside joke in the in amongst comedians. And they oh. all tell it in if, their own. But if, it's like if a you don't, if, joke. Yeah, if you don't have the time, just just Google the the best part of the movie was Gilbert Gottfried, the aristocrats. Mm -hmm. It's just it's, it's the retelling of the joke yeah. over and over again and all the different variations of it. And that's like a supposedly like a comedian's at the time, it was an inside joke or one that they'd tell to each other, and just Gilbert Gottfried goes over the top and just destroys it. He he made the movie basically. <laughs> and I, I think that was like the first time I ever heard like Bob Saget. Mm -hmm. It's like whole comedic role, like like as a comedian. Never. That's really that. Yeah, it. that's that's where everyone like realized. Oh, yeah. he's not the guy from. You're the, so uh, used to uh, yeah. Dirty fuck. He actually yeah, wants. To, he actually fuck. wants to fuck the Olsen twins. It's so, it's so gross. Oh, God. The uh, the first time I I heard him um, and could tell that he was kind of like a dirty comedian or whatever was uh, was back when um, uh, Norm Macdonald and Artie Lang had that movie called Dirty Work. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. When they were doing press for it, pretty much every time that they were on a show, uh, Bob Saget would come on because he was actually the producer of the movie. And he would he would kind of he would actually be the dirtiest one in the interview. It was actually pretty <laughs> funny. Or how about that? I think the first time I ever encountered a dirty Bob Saget was the uh, uh, the Dave Chappelle movie Half Bake. Half that Bake. Sounds like a, that yeah. sounds like a sex thing. Well, it's like it's like uh, he's uh, was it uh, one of the characters was in in an AA meeting or something, and he's like, marijuana is not a drug. Have you ever sucked dick for crack? I'm like Bob Saget <laughs> saying this. I'm like, America's dad in the I fucking that. early nineties. <laughs> America's, America's dad sucked dick for crack. Yeah. Uh, uh, Joe in the comments says that the uh, the Norm Macdonald roast I was talk, uh, talking talking uh, the roast Norm Macdonald was on I was talking about was actually the Bob Saget oh, roast. Yeah. And he's like, uh, Bob, you have a lot of well wishes here tonight. A lot of them would like to throw you down one, a well. <laughs> 
<laughs> Joe, number one, how come you don't come on this chat? Number two, why don't you wear your proper uniform? You. They want to murder you in a well, which seems a bit harsh. But that's what it says here on this cue card. That does seem a little harsh, but... <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, I'm trying to think who else I like. Uh, what, was that, what was that one comedian who always sounded like a total stoner and he died a few years ago? Uh, Mitch Hedberg. Long hair. Yeah, Mitch Hedberg. Hedberg. Yeah. Yeah, he, was, he was in a whole other stratosphere. Mm-hmm. But, uh, and I enjoyed him, but I wouldn't say he was like timeless or anything, but he was funny. In spurts. I couldn't, I couldn't like sit through like a whole set of like half an hour. If he used to do like a special, like, oh, it's a bit much. But Oh, I think I could. I watched my, my favorite is Doug Stanhope, but it's not even a stand up anymore. It's just his fucking podcast. I just fucking I can't stop laughing every time I listen to it. Maybe like Chris Delia? Delia? Yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah, he's good. Chris like Delia. Delia. That's Delia. Delia. He's he's strange looking, but he's funny as hell. Is this weird now? I don't. I don't watch so many like stand up. I, I watch. I like watch or listen to comedians on podcasts more than I actually watch or listen to their stand up anymore. So like Chris D'Elia, uh Bobby Lee from Mad TV. Bobby fame. Lee's have funny shit. His fucking podcast is fucking <laughs> hilarious. Bobby Lee is hilarious. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hannibal, Hannibal Burris. I don't like. I try, Burris I, I try to listen to his podcast. I couldn't listen to it, but I like. I think he's hilarious. And I like I like uh, Bert Crusher on podcasts. I don't like his stand up, but I like him on podcasts. He's That's the one who thing. does. He's the one who does the uh, machine story. That's his big famous fucking stand up bit where he helped the Russian mafia rob a train. I have not heard that one. It's pretty good. It's a pretty good fucking story. He's a, he's he's just this drunken frat boy dude who's famous for being like a funny drunken frat boy dude and he had like shows on like the travel network or something like that too but he was just like on this train ride like it was a school train ride or something like that and he befriended a bunch of fucking Russian gangsters on the train and they actually robbed the fucking train he was like part of the robbery of the train and somehow got out of being prosecuted for it hmm interesting the, who's that one comedian that he's like a he's like a big dude, he's probably from like Texas, always has a cigarette and a cocktail on his hands. Oh, Ron White? Yeah, he's funny. Yeah, he's too. funny. I like him. He's, he's the one of the to, He's listening to the comedy channel on like Sirius Satellite Radio all the time, so I got real familiar with like some of the old school guys. Yeah, he's 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 the one who's like associated with the blue collar comedy that's actually funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Anyway. All right. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks for your contribution. <laughs> this, is why, this is why Jamie is always the best. Huh? <laughs> eh? Huh? Eh? Eh? Throw you down a well, huh? That's what they say in this cute can. I want to murder you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, he's a guy. Eric Gilbert says Gilbert is a horrible name to have. Too many lame old jokes about Gilbert Grape. I assume you're. I assume you had a terrible childhood, then Gilbert. Man, I, when I think of Gilbert, I don't think the last time I think of was Gilbert Grape. Yeah. Uh... Eh? <laughs> yeah, <I'm> great. <laughs> I keep coming with my Bob Dylan impersonation. Anyone seen that set Jason Rose does on Andrew Dice Clay Presents the Blue Show circa 2015? No. Is it Jason Rose or... Yeah, there there is a com- comedian with uh, the last name Rose that is fucking awesome as well. He just died recently. Hmm. He was He had like really... Okay, this is the same guy I'm thinking of. Jason Rose. Sean Rose, I think, is the comedian I'm thinking of. Oh, 
Oh, I'm trying to think of the other comedian I really like too. I just, I mean, more as a as a character in movies. He does stand up, and he's pretty funny. At that he's uh, fuck. He hangs around with that crew, the fucking Sandler crew. He's hanging around with uh, Spade a lot. Um, what's his name there? He's like a sidekick. He's never like a main player in a movie. He was in like uh, Grandma's Boys and um, oh, what's his fucking name? Nick Swardson. Hmm. You know who that is the guy from Minnesota. Just like a, I don't know, it's your typical booze or druggy, whatever, just animal. Was, was he like the main guy in Grandma's Boy? Or? He no, no, no. He was uh, no. He's like the side, one of the sidekicks that was uh, like his buddy. Yeah, I think I know who that is. Yeah, you know when you see if she saw him. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's been in a bunch of stuff. So he's always like as one of those side characters, whatever, and just usually a bit out there. Willing to go uh, to the limit for doing like either gross shit or funny shit. So, hmm. Anyways, yeah, well, just you and me there, Lee. Everybody's muted. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start booting people from this channel. How do I do that? <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna link uh, Sean Roast in the side chat here because this is the kind of fucking jokes he does. He talks about, like, fucking child prostitution and shit. I can't see a side chat. Damn it. I, I'm on my phone. I can't I can't see, like, an actual window. I can't see comments, and that's not a bad thing. <laughs> okay, well, maybe I'll fucking share the screen here. Maybe I'll fucking do that. You ever watch the show Comedians and Cars Getting Coffee there with Seinfeld? It's pretty funny. It's got some good comedians on there. I've been meaning to watch that. Actually, I haven't watched. I haven't watched this, uh, like an HBO or big like network or whatever Netflix special in a while. And I just watched uh, um, Eliza. Oh, what's her name? She did a show. She's pretty good. Eliza Schlesinger. Schlesinger. That's the last name. There, there, there comes Jamie, a resident stand-up. Comedic expert, even if he only knows Norm. <laughs> oh, I know what this reminds me of too. What was that guy used to have? Oh, he was pretty funny too. Uh, the guy used to have a special on like the Comedy Channel, and it was the Insomniac. Was it the Insomniac with David Tell? Yeah, David Tell. Yeah, he was pretty funny. Can't hear a word he's saying. It's on his head. Are you able to play the sound for this? Get Nick in here. Nick will figure it out. The fuck? What did I miss? Why is everybody quiet? We're trying to listen to this this thing that we can't hear the sound. Of. <laughs> no audio so, coming through. Oh shit! What? You haven't been listening to say, Lee, you can't hear. We can't hear. What's this? This well, uh, I was, I was John Rouse singer. Yeah, maybe you should share it, Nick. Maybe you can have audio come through. Uh, I might be able to figure it out. I don't know. Um, is there a settings thing I can change here? I like it, let it, getting a glimpse into Lee's like uh, search, search history. history. Uh, Outside the, the oh, what was in my search history? history? Oh, you don't, you don't want to know. Not the Japanese tsunami. The tsunami that hit the Pacific Rim. The tsunami that killed child prostitution in Asia. <laughs> it destroyed child prostitution across Asia. That's one of their biggest money makers, guys. It got quiet. Because you're thinking, aren't you? <laughs> you're thinking about this, those young boys. Can you imagine... Being a young boy born into prostitution, 
You spend your entire life having your holes reamed out by German tourists. Jesus. And not even being properly compensated. <laughs> Praying to God every day, all day. Please, Lord, save me from this hellish fucking existence. And what does that asshole do? He sends a 30-foot fucking wave to suck your little malnutritioned ass out to sea. Suddenly, you're in the middle of the ocean. What does that asshole do? Your dog paddling, you have no He sends a 30-foot fucking wave to slowly suck your ass out to no elasticity. So it's just sucking in salt water. Oh, Jesus. You're slowly sinking. And you got a sewing machine chained to your leg. There's no way for a boy whore to die. That's no way for a boy whore to die. <laughs> he should die like any other boy whore in a bathtub with his internal organs shutting down from AIDS. Or overdosing after having to shoot smack into his asshole to kill the pain of a busy Chinese New Year. <laughs> the only two ways a boy whore ever dies in my perfect world. What the hell happened to his face? He got. Fucked. Yeah, he got in a. He got like in a fight or something before what the show. The or, or this shit. He was totally fucked up. Like he had like bad arthritis. If you actually look at his fucking wow. hands, they're like basically just like lobster claws. So he basically just drank himself to death, basically while doing comedy. Hmm. Oh, is he he's he's dead. Oh yeah, he's dead. He just recently died a couple oh. months back. How did he die? Was it a tsunami? No, I think it was like. A stroke or something like that. <laughs> Jesus. With his internal organs shutting down for me. <laughs> for a busy Chinese New Year. Yeah. <laughs> Holy fuck. That's that twisted. That's twisted. So uplifting. It's no worse than any of the other shit we've said on this chat. So, uh... and I agree if Joe Bill Burr's awesome. Nick, are you being a jerk? Mm, not as much as you. Eric Gilbert says the guys that called me Gilbert Grape had a terrible time during high school. Let's you know what? Oh, geez. This chat isn't all Eric wants his chat to be about is Eric. I'm tired of it. Fucking Gilbert <laughs> Grape, no one gives Yeah. Grape. Whoever called you that probably also sodomized you, and you're just too ashamed to admit it. It's okay to be sodomized. It's fine. It's true. Yeah. Sure. Nick was there a few times. <laughs> Joe says, I feel like Nick wouldn't have played that clip if he knew what the content was. Probably not, no. Listen, are you pathetic <laughs> to the too death now. of a boy? Too horse. fucking late now. Damn it, Nick. That's no way for a boy whore to die. <laughs> uh, thoughts on uh, like Chappelle and Rock? Anybody? Classic? I like Chappelle a lot. Mm-hmm. I, think he's awesome. I, I love Chappelle. I like Chris Rock too, but Chappelle, the Chappelle show is a fucking classic. I think he's talking about The Rock, Nick. I'm going to have a... <laughs> Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. Star of the Fast and the Furious movies. <laughs> Classic. Uh, like Samuel J- Jackson beer. I will say that Chris Rock yeah. had some, some, some jokes that really stood out uh, on their own, where Chappelle's whole thing was way smarter and well-crafted. Well Chris that's just some... th- Yeah, that's the thing. I think Chappelle's a way better writer than Chris Rock is when it comes to doing that shit. Yeah, Chris uh, Rock is more of like a knockout artist with some hilarious stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. But just Chappelle is a is a master. So, Nick, I just linked something in the side chat. Uh, another oh, you're gonna make me watch it, are you? You make us all watch. No, it. Oh, Jesus Christ, no, <laughs> no, not playing Olympic curling. Jesus, what? Trying to get my kit channel taken down. Rikus. Yeah, you know, Nick's entire empire is built on this channel. You want yeah, to right? lose everything? The, the Nick empire. <laughs> he was about to order himself a unicorn. The Maxwell rise to start him. Um. Yeah, Joe says, Chappelle shows an absolute classic, so ridiculous, so many great sh- 
sketches came from the show that was basically two seasons. Yeah. Why don't you get on the chat and tell us all about it, Joe? Are you afraid person. to show your face around are here? Are you at work or are you just uh, worried that Redbeard might come on and fat shame you? Or... Wow. True. Hey, guys, it's me, the Beer Patrol. I don't have a uniform, so I'm not showing my face until that happens. He's not Fuck wearing his all. uniform, Fuck so you guys. Fuck you guys. I'm the Art Carpenter of Beer Tube. What are you drinking, Nick? That, that looks like red wine. Hey, Joe. No, nope, I'm drinking the uh, Tom Waits for No One, which is oh. like a stout. It's like like a, a stout. What kind of stout is it? It's a it's a blueberry seven, stout nine, by Hammond River. It's a seven point nine percent ABV, so it's kind of like a, I'm gonna guess like a foreign extra kind of stout. I don't know the specifics. What does it taste like? It tastes like a stout. It tastes like God's away on business. Business. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> It's a leak. There's a leak in the pool. <laughs> it's a job. It's a job. It's a job. <laughs> well, I'm drinking another four and extra Pilsner for the same thing. The board, I'm the lane, I'm the gonna... blind. Shit, yeah, all the ones that are left in charge. Killers, yeah. thieves, and lawyers. <laughs> there's a leak. There's a leak in the boiler room. <laughs> God's away on business. Business. Ah! <laughs> he's American, like, he's, he's like calling it just an monster. imperial stout, but it's kind of weak sauce for an imperial stout. But it is more smoky. Yeah, it, it is like borderline imperial stout is what I'd kind of say about it. Hmm. Smoke stout, but I think it's more... It would be better if they had called it like, yeah. a, foreign, like a foreign extra or something. Mm. More like it's more like a foreign extra stout. Can you guys do more of the Cookie Monster voice? <laughs> <laughs> D is for Cookie. Somebody needs to fucking sync up Tom Waits songs with the Cookie Monster. Somebody song. did Someone that. Did that, did, did that? Did they? Yeah. Oh uh, shit! Okay. Shit. Um, I can't do it on. I can't broadcast it. But if you look up, go to uh, YouTube and look up Cookie well, Waits. Why can't you broadcast it? Because <laughs> it's flagged. Because they, they did do, they did two songs a couple of years ago called uh, they did God's Away on Business, and they did uh, Hell Broke Loose. Here I thought <clears throat> I came up with something original. Wow. Nice try, Jamie. You're not so oh, funny after all. This is already great. I'm worse than viewers. Right now. You are the worst. Here you go. Here you go, what? No one can see shit. Who's hosting it's this channel? Sinking. The ship is sinking. <laughs> Alright. I'm flagging this video. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I mean, a beer like this does put you in the mood to listen to some Tom Waits, I guess. I'm, listen, I'm in the mood to listen to some Nick right, Lowe right, on right, vinyl. Write right, a Christmas card to a hooker in Dallas. <laughs> well then. I got, a, I got a feeling Tom Waits would probably approve of that. Oh, he would. Cookie Monster mashup. I mean, overlaid on Cookie Monster is just fucking hilarious. Mm. I'm in the mood to yeah, listen it was to actually, Monster. Seeing that, I think it was the first time I actually, was, I actually listened to Tom Waits, I think. Who's rubbing their microphone on their nuts? Right in their nuts. I mean, I am, but I thought I muted myself. No, it's usually when we get that. It's not that. <laughs> no, no, I, I thought it kind of fit. The noise kind of fit the Tom Waits theme we were going on. But right. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Oh, hey, uh, today it's all these sunny in Philadelphia. New season premiere. Jesus, how many seasons do they have now? 13. They're on the 13th season. Holy fuck. I know. Amazing. That show's still like, on. Oh, oh, yeah. That's funnier than ever, man. I used to watch it when I still had TV, but I sort of dropped off after that. But... Now you just watch porn. 
Like I've seen mm -hmm. 10 seasons of this story. One of those Same things life. where I need to revisit. Like, get a... I need to just, like, buy, like, D DVDs of, of seasons. I, I, I keep meaning to get, like, fucking Curb Your Enthusiasm on DVD. I haven't seen the last season of Curb Your Enthusiasm yet. The one that just came out a few months ago. Either of yeah. Never got into that one, personally. I like that one. That's the that's the one that's like the 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 Seinfeld where I can like kind of sympathize with the main character because he's just such a clueless dipshit. I don't think you're supposed to sympathize with him, are you? Well, you're supposed to, and I think in a way, he's he's, to, I think it's a cringe. I don't. Really... Well, listen, I'm not saying I think he's the fucking hero or anything. Let's not let's not go too fucking out, out of bounds here. I'm just saying it's like you can kind of get why he's such a fucked up. Idiot who who makes his own life terrible by just being terrible to people and being so selfish and self-absorbed. Hey, for the record, Walter White was the good guy, and I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> He's the anti-hero. <laughs> Speaking of career enthusiasm, one reminds me of a comedian on that show who's hilarious, and Bob Einstein. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Super as big. a as, as a character on there, and just in general, like if you were watching him on, he's been on. <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld's uh, the, his car comedy comedy show there. Mm -hmm. and it's, Comedians it's, in and cars getting coffee. And who who, who and was hilarious. it again? It was Bob again? Einstein. Bob Einstein. Yeah, yeah. Play he kind of talks like this. He's the, guy, yeah, he's, the guy, he's the guy who plays Super Dave Osborne. Yeah. Oh, that okay. But when he gets excited and he's like yelling, it's just <laughs> his, voice, his voice is hilarious. What his, are you talking about? His, his, I still remember cameo, his cameo on Curb Your Enthusiasm where he tells a joke to Jerry Seinfeld is the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I cunt still... Is, your cunt is at the sink. <laughs> <laughs> Gave away the punchline. I remember yeah. seeing, seeing him as a kid on fucking Bizarre. That show was amazing. Where, where he first sort of did uh, Super Dave. <laughs> Amazing. I used to watch that as a kid. Yeah. I never let my kid watch that show. No. Oh yeah. There. Well, there's there's the there's the censored, and uncensored version. Like mm -hmm. years later, I discovered. Oh shit. There's a like there was a version of this made that had a bunch of nudity in it. <laughs> it wasn't censored at all. <laughs> That's right. I used, to, I used to watch that and the Benny Hill show. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, Benny Hill. Oh, yeah. Remember anybody remember Smith and Smith comedy mill? Yeah, I do. Yep. Yeah. That's before uh Red Green before Red Green. Dude, dude does Red Green get his voice all <laughs> Yeah. Well, well you, you, just, you don't handsome. find your hands handsome. Find your handy. handy. You stick on the ice. Yeah, it's the one where like uh, they'll actually have like little skits in it, and one of the skits in Smith and Smith was Red Green. So the like, Red Green character actually existed all the way back to like 1980. But really, he did I don't show. Yeah, you see, I don't remember that from watching Smith and Smith. But I mean, it was I was so young then. It was just like I, I just remember him and his wife hosting the show. That's basically it. Yeah, There's like another... she she retired from acting and he went on his own to do his own show. They're still together. Here's another was, Katie like, Green remember, was uh, four on the floor. Oh yeah, four, oh, the four on the floor. The floor. With, uh, uh, was it Red today? Green, the guy that played Bill in uh, in Red Green, but uh, mm -hmm. and a couple others too. Mr. Canoehead. Yeah, Mr. Canoehead. Mr. Canoehead. I oh, like the uh, fake Bill, video what's games. Bill Wildman or Wild something Wildman, isn't it? Uh, Peter. He was Peter Wildman. And, that's it. And what's his name? Uh, the, the comedian that just the Canadian comedian that just died recently. He was on on the Frantics. Uh, fucking yeah. was he McDonald? Paul Chato, Rick Green, Dan Redican, and Peter Wildman. Uh, uh, Says Wikipedia. Okay, I was thinking a different guy. Four on the floor is Paul Chow. Oh, Chow. Green. Oh my god, he looks so good. 
Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't watch it. I watched Smothers Brothers. So, yeah, Smothers Brothers was good. I wasn't familiar with Red Green until much, much later on. Wow, there was only 13 episodes of Four on the Floor. Seems like it I was, was always, longer than that. I was always amazed how few episodes there were of the original Saved by the Bell. There was only like 60 <laughs> episodes of that show. And meanwhile, the new class went for like two or three times as, as long as that. Yeah. That blows my mind because I always thought Saved by the Bell went on forever as a kid. But it didn't. How did you bring us into like some shit like teen fucking garbage? Wait, wait, Greg, talking about, like legitimate comedy. Don't blame me for that. Although, we were, although we were talking about red green, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I love you. Hey, I was a huge fan of red green in my teen years. I love red green. I can't believe Loved Nick that. was ever a teenager. Yeah, amazingly enough, it was one point. Way to make it awkward, Greg. Yeah, wait. I didn't make it awkward. I wasn't talking about you losing your virginity or anything. <sighs> Who's that awkward for you or Nick? Yeah. A little, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B, and a little bit it was weird because our dads filmed it. Oh. <laughs> wait, what? What the fuck, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> you just call him Craig or Greg? Craig, I don't know, Greg. Where is Craig anyway? He's not here. For don't ever think you don't ever think you're in a position to gross me out when I can't just take it a little bit further. Greg, what is your fascination with positions? Uh, well, it's amazing how you can accomplish the same thing and, and it seems completely different. Oh Jesus. And certain ones you can do the the oh oops slip. I didn't mean to stick it in your butt, but you totally did mean to stick it in your butt. Oops, did I, you're like, did I do that? Like, uh, Steve <laughs> Steve or something. Wah, 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 wah. Oh, did that's... I do that? Well, that's a way to sustain a boner. Reference Steve Urkel. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> wow. Boners are pretty cool. No. I'll tell you what's not cool is a wife who's on her period. <laughs> and blueberry stouts. It's better than pulling out and saying not the mama. Oh Jesus! <laughs> what? Do you remember the show Dinosaurs? The baby dinosaurs is not the mama to the dad. Oh yes. yes. <laughs> Just like pulling out and saying not the mama. Oh my god! Yeah, you know, this is a world <laughs> where that show actually happened. <laughs> yeah, that that is that is such a '90s relic. Oh my god! I haven't seen the dinosaurs like that that TV show since the uh, '90s. I wish the Mandela I effect was real so I could like <laughs> into an alternate fucking universe and that'd be great. Eric Gilbert uh, says he had the sleeping giant Mr. Canoe Hid Red Ale last month. Interesting. Seriously? That sounds sexy. That'd be awesome. I love the name. I love Mr. Canoe Hid. I wonder if they had to actually pay any royalties to the fucking frantics. Or I'm if they were involved, if any, involved in any way, shape, or form. Someone get Dan Redican on the fucking phone and let him know he's being ripped off. It's Redican. Wow. I'm waiting for somebody to make a cabbage head beer. Yeah, I got a cabbage for a head! There's no reason to be racist, you were... Oh, wow. I'm, again, ama I, I'm amazed that both Ewart and uh, Jamie have been on this show for so long. I mean, I still believe they're the same person, but still, it's pretty good camera work. Or voice work, I should say. <laughs> Everyone just crash? <laughs> hmm? yeah. What the fuck? Everyone yeah. just sitting anyway. silent there. It's like I dropped an N-bomb or something. The um, Speaking of I missed that. Did he say an N-bomb? What? Speaking of Craig... Uh, yeah, I said uh, Niagara Brewing Company. 
Oh, Nagger Brewing Company. <laughs> oh no. Hey, where where is Sepia Craig? Anyways, I think he got run off permanently by uh, over talkers. <clears throat> My people talking too much about Carling Blacklogger. Blacklogger, that's fine. Blacklogger. A black log, Darling Black. I said it again. Carling Black Label. Jesus, Nick. So unprofessional, I know. Oh my God, you're making you roll around in his grave. <laughs> I know, uh, God rest his soul. That, that poor you were. It's a, it's yeah. a crypt. We knew him well. Wasn't nearly as creepy as Greg, but we liked him anyway. No. <laughs> Wasn't nearly as creepy. I felt he could be creepier at times. <laughs> I, I've tried. I just never could uh, pull off what you've done, sir. No. That's a compliment. You might as well take it as such, sir, Greg. I, do, I take what I can get. What the hell's with Literally. the headband? Jesus. <laughs> You're just <laughs> noticing that now? You like, you like, my, head, you like my headband? Hours now. I, I noticed it, like, but I, it just sort of dawned on me. He's wearing a fucking headband in his Yeah. I'm cool. It's from, it's from Henderson Brewing. This chat is brought to you by Henderson Brewing. You know Henderson? So, like Harry and the Hendersons? No, Henderson Brewing. They're a brewery of Toronto. And they're actually sponsoring the chat. So every time you say fuck you, Nick. I thought, chat, I thought you were wearing that because cents. you thought. I thought you were wearing that because Bigfoot's real. I would love it if Bigfoot was real. Did you ask for free beer to wear the headband? No, no. They, they <laughs> just gave They had a bunch of beer. They had a bunch of them. You pulled a red beard and you asked for free beer? No, I don't I don't need to suck anyone's dick for free beer. I get my free beer on its own by sucking you don't get free beer anyway. Oh my. I, okay, I need this for that. <laughs> whoa, whoa, that's a bomb. <laughs> Maybe spit up my Tom Waits beer. Nah, this, nah, this, head, this, this headband's cool. I'm, I'm bringing headbands back. I'm personally <clears throat> making it a style again. It actually is quite hot outside. I get it. A little sweaty off your bald head. No, he yeah. wanted to make sure that he does the the, the be the most uh, Olivia Newton John as possible. Yes. Uh, actually, truth be told, my wife just said, "Hey, you should wear this. You'll look stupid on the chat." I'm like, "Okay, I'll do it." <laughs> You're the smartest woman ever. It's like you don't have to even try. It's just. <laughs> I will say though, these things are actually quite good when you're running. You I look. Can, yeah, I'll fully admit you look stupid in them, but they are very convenient. I have no no more hair up top to catch the sweat as it drips into my brow. Well, that's my thing. Is I mean, I like. Oh, right now I haven't shaved my head in two weeks, but usually I shave my head. So yeah, there's literally it just all over gets in my eyes and stuff. So this actually makes it much more enjoyable to go if I'm going for a bit of a longer run, especially in this weather, which tonight it's fucking hot. I don't know where about where you guys are, but uh, it's mm. pretty hot here. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably the only person on the chat here that doesn't really know what that's like anymore. <laughs> but you, are, you still have most of your hair, don't you? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Plenty. Hmm. No, he just, he just does the comb over. It's amazing what toupees do. <laughs> mm. <laughs> don't be jealous, boys. Don't be jealous. I don't think he, I don't think he toupees. I think he just spray paints. Like, gets a nice can from Canadian Tire. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. You know, I, I I can't believe that that product actually exists and people use it because I think it's good. It's such a bad idea, dude. There's absolutely nothing worse than a comb over. Like a, a a friend of a friend of my mom's is dating a guy, and otherwise he's a perfectly normal, perfectly nice guy. But he's bald and he's got like an epic comb over. Like it's just all the way across his head, and it's, it's an just ear like. Ear. I'm like a couple times, like you know, when we've been at like family functions and it's been out, we've been outside and it's been windy, <laughs> and just his whole hair just goes. Shh. I'm just like, I am so embarrassed for you right now. Like it's just like, why are you afraid of being bald? There's nothing wrong with it, but when you do the comb over, it's like, who do you think you're fooling? Like that's like, <laughs> that's like. That's like me hiding a dead hooker under the sheets and my mom being like, what's the smell? I'm like, oh, I, 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 I don't know. It's, I farted. <laughs> it's not a dead hooker. Yeah, I'm, I'm at that stage now, too. I think I'm about to take it down really close because yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not getting any better. It's, it's, it's going away. Yeah. Just, just grow a skullet. 
No, skull it. I've still, I've still, I've still got much of my hair on up top, but I, I just kind of like the look of having it shaved. I like the convenience <laughs> of it. You know, like, like I, I got the widow's peak, and everyone thinks that's because I'm going bald. But the thing is, if you were to look at me as a picture, as a child, I've had that widow's peak since I was born. So it's just, it just <laughs> is, is what it is. Oh, that's an ominous sign. <clears throat> Actually, no, I, I think I've got one there too. So, widow's peak. But I mean, my widow's peak's not like up here. Yes, yeah, <laughs> that's where my start, right? Like, like oh my, my, my hairline is still reasonable. Worse. I mean, look, it's even worse from this morning. Jesus, <laughs> you've lost hair since this morning. <laughs> that's what having kids will do to you. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I know used... your your, pic, your picture on Facebook is a total catfish. Whose? <laughs> Yours. Mine. Yeah, you you look like a handsome man in that photo on Facebook. I know. Now I'm like a bro- broken down. You look yeah. you look gorgeous. Like my wife is like, I'd like to fuck that. And then she sees you in real life, and she's like, ah, I'd still fuck it, but not as not as enthusiastic. <laughs> not as enthusiastic. <laughs> oh, wow. My wife still loves me. That's all that matters. God bless. That's you. good. <laughs> Tell her I say hi. I won't. <laughs> and I never would. <laughs> I don't even never, met, never meet her. You never met Greg. He was a figment of your imagination. Goodbye. Back in the basement. <laughs> Back in the basement. <laughs> and then you lock her in there, and then Jamie's like, "It's my time to stay." Like Back in the basement <laughs> and get and get me a black label. <laughs> You vote a size 14. <laughs> what? Oh, wait. Wrong chat. <laughs> Wrong chat. Spray tan. Wait, she was a really big fat girl, wasn't she? <laughs> oh, wow. Precious. 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 <laughs> oh, oh, I hope she's not watching this right now. You fuck me, I'd fuck me. Oh, Nick, come on. I gotta say, we're at least a 7 out of 10 on the rapey scale right now. Rapey scale. puts the lotion on its skin. Oh, or else it gets the hose again. Puts the lotion on its skin or it gets the hose again. By the way, are you like a size 10 or something? <laughs> Size, what was it, size 12? It's been a long time since I've seen that movie. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. Still to this day, one of my favorite uh, suspense thrillers. I, I was tucked watching that my, movie. Dick, my dick between my legs and scared the fuck out of my wife. Do you, do you listen to, like, Q Lazarus when you do it? And you're like, goodbye, horses. No, like, my wife oh, had never <laughs> seen a guy do that before. And she saw it, she's like, oh, my God, you look like a woman. <laughs> there's I'm a not a woman between... I like the fuck. Is it there? I should look from behind. I've got hemorrhoids. There's a oh, difference between God. wanting to wanting to look like a woman and then metamorphosizing into one. Like a butterfly. Like a really fucking disturbing, ugly butterfly. Reminder to self. Make gif of Nick dancing to Goodbye Horses. Oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I... And you, you've you set yourself up for that one, too. Yeah, yeah. I, do, I, I totally did. did that. With, with Jamie yeah. in the chat. You know, I, I credit two movies for fucking me up to, to make me the way I am today. Number one, that scene from Silence of the Lambs where he's tucking his balls. And the other one is Pulp Fiction where they're, ra- they're anal raping the black dude. do 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 <laughs> I, I, feel those were, I feel those are two traumatic, two traumatic moments in my life. Really? <sighs> that, that seemed very traumatic. Yeah, well, you, you've had it easy, dude. <laughs> I watched it at a very young age. Your, your like... most traumatic moments come from something you watched and not something that's actually directly happened to you? you, you from... You've gotten off pretty no, fucking no, easy, I, I bel- Listen, guys, i got to admit this right now. I've never been molested. Never. <laughs> what's the what's the matter? Your parents didn't dress you up sexy enough. What the fuck's going on? 
I, I, well, now you're making me feel bad about myself. <laughs> Fuck you. I, I, was just, I, was, I was just remembering it. I wasn't Bagley pretty, and Doug I wasn't standing pretty enough to come along. Fucking joke. Oh, God. I'll say that the, the, my most traumatic experience was something I watched. I saw that Bone Tomahawk movie. <clears throat> oh yeah, that will fuck you up. You that, saw that the, movie like a year ago. That movie wasn't. That movie was actually really good. Um, was good. The movie was really good. Just the one scene is still haunts. It still haunts me. Or yeah, they, the, tear, uh, they tear apart the, uh, the bisection. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Dude, yeah, uh, sort of watch, thing. watch like fucking Salo or Requiem for a Dream or. Uh, I saw Requiem. Or for uh, me. what's the other one? The. Uh, Serbian tale where he accidentally Serbian rapes the film. son. Yeah, Serbian films is kind of numbing. That 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 film's just ugh. get it over with. It's not even a good film. It's same no, it's not. The... Sorry, pardon me. What? Pardon me. Right. A bunch of in, a bunch of inbred hillbillies had to drive by on their Harleys. I We barely even heard that. Actually, uh, <laughs> you apologize oh, for the one time it barely. Oh registered. good. Oh good. I'm glad it wasn't too loud. Anybody sent, sent invite to Redbeard? <sighs> Is he asking for one? I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> oh okay. Yeah. No. I'd... But you know what? If you were legit to ask me, like, the most disturbing movie I watched was the uncut version of Cannibal Holocaust. Not because the movie itself was all that. I don't like the animal cruelty. I don't, no, I don't like yeah. that shit. So I, don't, I, I will not watch that movie. I know they have a non-animal cruelty-free version, so I will... Or an animal-free cruelty, however the fuck you pronounce the sentence I'm trying to say. Um, I know they have that, so I would be okay with that. But yeah, that, that movie was kind of fucked up with some of the real cruelty shit that the Italians... They're kind of assholes. The director actually came up on charges and had to go to court and prove that the people in the film weren't murdered. Well, it comes off as a bit of a snuff film, and I yeah, mean, it, it, it kind of is. I mean, the actual people getting murdered, I have absolutely no problem with. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, well, I mean, the the people in the film are all fucking assholes. Like they're pieces of shit. They deserve <laughs> everything they get. Yeah. Although the guys kind of get off easy. Meanwhile, the girl gets raped for like ten minutes before they kill her. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, you know That's what? She, she had a classy 70s bush. I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate the days where you had to work for labia. It didn't just, <laughs> it didn't just come for you right away. It's just a, oh, here's labia. No, you had to work for it. You had, to, you had to dig your way through it. Jamie knows what I'm talking about. Eh? Eh? <laughs> And said they wanted to throw you down a well. Cute kind of thing. Seems kind of harsh. I don't know. All right. <laughs> I gotta go, guys. I'm I'm tired. See y'all later. Oh, oh you later. fucking you weak link. You wuss. Ah, oh, time to go to Sorry. bed, baby. You get some milk. That's right. Get some milk. We still talking movies. Movies, uh, barely. No, uh, I'm no, talking about we will be once fucking Captain Bringdown gets out of the fucking chat. <laughs> yeah, let's talk, let's talk about movies. Let's talk yeah. about you know the no, those... Titanic. Really let's nice. talk yeah. about Pumpkinhead. Wherever you are. My wife brought home a DVD she got for free. It was called I, I believe it was Pumpkinhead Later. Three. Yeah. What'd you say? It was Greg? I can't remember. It was either Pumpkinhead 3 or Pumpkinhead 4. I can't remember which one it was, but either one, I wanted to return it even though it was free. Yeah, the sequels are all terrible. I've seen them all. The bear. first one's not bad, and the second one, from what I remember, was okay. The third and the fourth one were like, well, basically, they're like Sharknado quality, where they're just basically like, hey, let's just CG shit. We can't afford a guy in a suit, so we're just going to CG this into the movie and make it yeah. look good. But it doesn't look good. I mean, the the whole the whole thing behind uh, the first pumpkin hit is that I mean, it's Stan Winston and his first fucking directorial uh, debut there, and I mean, known for special effects. So like the whole thing was like, we're gonna put on some fucking badass special effects and make a horror movie with that. Practical. You know what? The first pumpkin head actually I think has a very creepy vibe to it, but <laughs> after that, it's kind of uh, not so much. You know, it's got a really good Lance Hend Hendrickson performance, too. Underrated, I think. But you know what makes me so sad is that, like, movies from 
Pardon me. Okay, there we go. They're gone now. Uh, movies from the, the 70s, 80s, and maybe even 90s, like, are better nowadays than, like, low-budget movies from those eras are better than low-budget movies from today's era because nowadays it's, like, low-budget means, okay, we're going to get, like, like basically high school or, or college graduates to do CG for this movie, and it's going to look fucking awful. Back then, at least, they put a guy in a fucking suit, and at least it's like, okay, well, this is good enough. There's definitely a difference between having to scrounge and actually build something physically compared to uh, fucking off with some uh, really bad CGI in a movie. Like, there, there, there is a marked uh, difference there. Now, I don't know if anyone here has watched Hercules in New York recently, but oh the scene God. where he fights the bear, oh, oh, my God. YouTube that if you have not seen that. That yeah. is fucking classic. Special. Oh, no, there's a bear loose from the zoo. I will take it on. I, I will, will take him you on. Actually, the version I watched, it was dubbed, so it's like, I will take it on. It'll yeah. be fine. Both versions have their <laughs> joys. <clears throat> I, I've not I've not actually seen the Schwarzenegger version, but I did YouTube some clips from it, and it seems both of them seem pretty good. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Regarding the uh, pumpkin spice thing that somebody oh, said no. earlier. Oh, no. the drain the spice. You got to make sure that you don't uh, support illegal poachers. You get oh, the uh, ethically that, sourced man. pumpkin spices. Albino ne pumpkins. That's so sad. Ne Nick, yeah. I gotta I gotta like put a donation in for you just so you can figure out how to close all those windows. You got a lot of windows open, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that, is, that is slowing down your browser. Yeah, also, well... Uh, you don't need that my many My computer's also got windows. 16 gigs of RAM. It's oh, fine. geez. Whoopie fucking do. Let's show off our fucking cocks. I've also got 16 gigs of RAM. Yeah. Eric Gilbert mentions uh, the curb stomping from American History X. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, that was pretty gnarly as well. I, yeah. always, I always thought the um, the cornfield beating from the casino was pretty oh, visceral. That's... At least it was. At least it was when I saw that movie. Yep, that yeah, one was that's... pretty nasty too. Yep. Mm -hmm. You actually, for a brief moment, you feel sorry for Joe Pesci <laughs> because he, he then, watches his brother get beat to death in front of him. You know? But then you realize he's, like, he's, he's still, still breathing. Like, he's still okay. breathing. Oh, let's fix that. Mm -hmm. Fuck that, Joe Pesci. Fuck him. Yeah, but I mean, then then you realize, oh yeah, he's actually a piece of shit, and he's just in this endless cycle of uh, mobsters preying on each other to get ahead. So it's like, yeah, fuck that guy. But <laughs> fuck him. <sighs> yeah. There's any movie films that really make me cringe, but I mean, nothing really come to mind. The, the movies that have always creeped me out, uh, I don't know if I'd make, necessarily make me say they made me cringe, but like movies I watched as a kid that I really shouldn't have watched as a kid, even though they kind of were kids' movies, like Garbage Pail Kids freaked me out, oh, Little, Monsters, Little Monsters freaked me out. Mm -hmm. Like those movies are like kids' movies, but kind of like, even like something like Labyrinth or um, what's the other one that they did, uh, Jim Henson? Dark Crystal? Did. Dark Crystal. Yeah, yeah, Dark Crystal. Those movies are creepy as fuck when you're a child. See, I, they're weird. I, I watched or, Aliens or, way too young as a child. Aliens, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Or yeah. Never Ending Story when like the wolf attacks and then like the horse dies, but then doesn't really die, but then it dies. And you're like, no, my childhood's ruined. <laughs> the 1978. Oh, the, 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 the horse dies in the the, uh, the bog of despair or some shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I 19, watched, uh, 1978 Invasion of the Body Snatchers is probably, if I was to like cite a film that actually like creeps me out the most, is probably that one. That one still like, gets like, built. Like, I, I, was, I watched Halloween I was like, at a fairly early age, and that movie scared like, the shit out of me. I was like 10 or 11 when I first saw like Exorcist 3. Exorcist 3 is the best Exorcist film, by the way. Is it really? I've only seen the first. One. I haven't seen. It it. Like, oh, actually, oh, you'll you'll like Exorcist Three, Greg. That's well, that's I, a, okay. an awesome film. All right, I'll have to check it out. Makes me think there's probably lots of nudity in it. It's got George. It's got George C. Scott. It's got a fucking serial killer walking around with this giant pair of fucking weird ass scissors that they're like cutting people's heads off with. It's Jesus. fucking way out there, man. 
fucking way of I was gonna say, that doesn't seem I, like it would fit into the Exorcist only, lore, but okay. The only thing That's I remember what? from Exorcist 3 was the, the priest that was stuck melted to the ceiling. Yeah. That that and that one, man. It that, that's what I like about it. It just totally goes away from the original Exorcist and Exorcist Two. The Heretic is just kind of a piece of shit anyway. But um, yeah, Exorcist Three is like actually one of the best fucking horror movies of its time. That's like totally underrated. Yeah, I'll have to rewatch that. Oh, wow. Yeah, I had no idea that that movie was like any of the. I thought the only one that was good was the first one. I don't even like the first one all that much. Well, I, I like the first one, but I'm I'm not like one of those people that says, oh, scariest movie of all time or whatever. Oh, no, not even close. No, yeah. no, see, I like the first one. I don't think it's particularly scary. I think it's a it's a well-made movie, though. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a good movie. There's definitely some, like, freaky scenes in, like, the, the uncut version where she goes like, like spider walk and, you know. Mm-hmm. I do enjoy the crucifix masturbation, but that's no, just me. Well, it wasn't the whole prim- wasn't the whole premise about the original Exorcist movie the fact that it was like based on like a true story or something? Eh, somewhat. But I mean, so a true story, <laughs> quote unquote true. Well, I mean, I mean, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is based on a true story, very, very loosely based. Yeah. Based on like, true story. Although like it's, it's really God. funny. It's really funny. That sort of stuff still works on people. I remember years ago when the um, remake of Texas Chainsaw Massacre came out, and a girl I worked with was freaked the fuck out. She was like, did you know this is based on a real story? Like, this actually happened? Like, this really happened? She was convinced that the (laughs) Borkians of the uh, two officers going down into the uh, uh, Hewitt house or whatever, looking for Leatherface or whatever, were actually attacked and like that was actual like police footage that was like put, Jesus. put on the film. Jesus. She was that convinced by it. You know, so I, like, well, I, that's I, not I, how based on true story movies work. I mean, I, I mean, yeah. I wanted, I wanted the slap like, just call her a dumb fuck, but at the same time, I'm like, you know what? I'm actually kind of heart warmed to, to know that I, those I, movies can still have an effect on people and actually was, make them believe. I was going to say, I'm actually kind of jealous of people that can actually get that scared because I actually love – this is actually why I love horror video games like Outlast and Amnesia, Amnesia and stuff like that because they actually Amnesia. can get jumps out of me where I find uh, horror movies for the most part. Like I don't remember the last movie that's actually le- legitimately scared me because usually movies don't have that effect on me because I'm yeah. too desensitized. Back when Nintendo, I used to love the Metroid series because of the games were scary like Super Metroid. Yep. Yeah. Playing yeah, there's a very, there's a very iso- isolated feeling to those games. Yeah, which is not a surprise oh, yeah. because they're they're basically aiming to emulate the Alien series. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and when you're young and impressionable, like age thirteen, then it yeah, it's it can be fucking scary. I think you're still pretty young and impressionable, Nick. Oh, thank, <laughs> thank you, Redbeard. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna rewatch this, and the next time we talk, yeah, to I know. Him, I'm so sorry, man. Uh, sorry, Redbeard. Sorry, he yeah. didn't start for being a dick. To this day, I I still have like <clears throat> I wouldn't call them nightmares, but very vivid dreams that are like alien related, and and I love that like alien aliens. I, I love those, movies, but I think but are you... watching them so young, mm-hmm. I think I was like when I when I watched Alien, which is probably one of the more violent. Like, are you are you worried about seven. like sitting there minding your own business and all of a sudden your your chest feels funny and goes Wah! no it's, uh, it's not that part it's it's the whole action like getting chased and being you know being yeah, chased. Yeah, chased oh that kind of suspense yeah. being chased I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you the thing that scares me most about that franchise is any movie that came before this it came after the second one god those <laughs> movies are terrifying they are so terrifying bad. Bad. <laughs> like yeah. oh my god like it's scary you know, how bad this is you know what? You think it's like, okay, Alien 3 is not good. Okay, but no, no worries. Oh. They'll make it better. No, no. Alien, Alien Resurrection 1 was just worse. like an isolated like scary movie. The second then, one was just an action flick. But it was an well, awesome action flick. It was an amazing... Well, you think yeah, is, it was the amazing. Alien, Alien was Cameron's is a master. pretty much... The, Alien franchise is pretty much the same as the Terminator franchise where both of them start out as horror movies. Alien is a horror movie. Terminator yep. is essentially a slasher movie. Yeah, and term- both of them, this, this both is a psychotic people- robot alien is coming after you to try and kill you. 
Whereas yeah. in the second one, you're you're kind of like trying to save the world. Yeah, it's the action movies. And you know what? Both those franchises, the first and the second ones, are incredible. You can argue which one you prefer. I prefer the sure. sequels in both franchises, but I would completely be fine with somebody who, you know, thinks the first ones are better because the sure. first ones are incredible too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, both those franchises after the second one, man, they went down the hill. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. my god, the Terminator Three yeah. sucked. Yeah. Okay. Let Let's be honest. Terminator Three was the best of the sequels after the second one because Terminator Salvation I, was worse I, and Terminator I, Genesis was even worse. I think I think that as exciting as it was to have a sequel after Number Two, it wasn't necessary. They oh, just wanted to make they, money off the franchise. Oh, well, I mean. Terminator Two was necessary. Is is that uh, yeah, for a long? Yeah, time but Terminator Two was movie. worth it. Terminator Two was just a big budget remake of the first film. But it was still a good movie. Like, yeah, it was a good like, movie. To watch it, like yeah, to watch it, one of the greatest movie. action movies of all time. Yeah, it's, and, it, Terminator Two is my personal favorite movie of all time. Like everything, I love that movie. So you won't hear me say anything bad about it. But but uh, essentially, what those franchises did, and Greg's right, like. Alien is essentially a haunted host story in outer space, yes. And, yes. and Terminator is a slasher film. Essentially, what the sequels did is turn them into action films and make them more uh, basically just you know more pop culture friendly films. Basically, yeah, sanitize them. Which is actually kind of funny because my my wife watched the Alien movies for the first time about four or five years ago, somewhere in that range. And she actually found this aliens more scary than alien, which I didn't get. But she's like, "Oh, I found it like." The, but she, I guess, reacts more to jump scares than she does. Yeah, that would be the thing, right? Stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that al like comparing aliens to alien and then like T two to Terminator. Yeah, aliens definitely had a little bit more suspense to it, and a little yes, bit. It, did. it was definitely darker. You didn't really, you know, there there wasn't any positiveness. Like there there wasn't like a positive feeling to to it at all. It yeah, because yeah, Aliens isn't a remake of Alien. It's 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 a continuation of the story, and you already yeah. know what you're getting into, but it still builds atmosphere, and there's still suspense, whereas with Terminator 2, it is really just a big-budget action film remake yes. of the first film. Yeah. 100%. Absolutely. It is. I mean, it's a continuation, but yeah, it, it, it does essentially take the same concept of it. Like Yeah. Uh, you know what? Uh, for those of you who have seen uh, Terminator Genesis, I actually really enjoyed the first 45 minutes of that movie where essentially they kind of remade and reimagined the first two movies. It, I'm not saying it was great, but it was it was fun. It was after that point that that movie completely fell apart. But I kind of thought it was like me. It's like, hey, you know what? They're trying to remake this 80s, 90s nostalgia movie. And I kind of thought it was fun. You yeah, know, it was kind of weird having an Asian T-1000. I thought that kind of thing <laughs> off, but... <laughs> they wouldn't use Asians. Yeah. Now, with, with, with the alien world uh, and Prometheus and Covenant, are, are they doing a third one after Covenant? Supposedly they they're, supposedly, they're supposed to make an actual proper alien film. That bridges the ne two? Next. Well, no, they're supposed to actually make an, another alien film that takes place it's basically going to halloween it where it's basically take it only takes the first and the second movie into account oh, okay and then it ignores everything else after that however from what i've heard is like i don't know that movie's on hiatus or something i don't think it's being made right now yeah. so you know what I, I don't i i blamed everything after aliens on newt <laughs> <laughs> if, if you really think about it everything that happened after aliens is all newt's fault because they had to go back and find her and then the alien got on the mothership and put some eggs down, and those eggs hatched, and the, you know, the ship crap. All that fucking shit happened because that dumbass character knew. Fuck her. <laughs> Should have just let her die. Fuck yeah. that thing. You know, I have a personal hatred for it. You know, as much as I don't like Alien 3, and I, I, I think Alien Resurrection is awful, Prometheus and Prometheus 2 are so bad. They're oh terrible. my god. And Prometheus. One is so bad, and then Prometheus Two is somehow worse. It's like, oh, well, the whole shtick with Prometheus, Prometheus. Sorry, I can't pronounce that word. Prometheus, Prometheus Two uh, was that. Oh, well, we're intro reintroducing the alien. They showed it in all the trailers, all that shit, and then they completely redid the whole fucking thing. Spoilers for a movie you haven't seen it, but like, yeah. it's like, 
oh, now it turns out the fucking android is creating the aliens. And it's like, yeah, what? They kind of like oh. just fuck this shit. Also, it, didn't the, be, it went a little anyway. I haven't seen yeah. Prometheus yet. Like, you don't it's need bad to. enough in the first movie, the, the space jockeys, which originally were the aliens that had that elephant trunk, they just made them people that had a mask on. It's like, no, that's not how the alien saga has gone for the last 20 years because there's a lot of comics that expanded it and books and shit like that. And I read most of them. I was a big fan. And then it's like, the movie's just like, nah, fuck it. It's like the Star Wars universe. It's like, nah, fuck the expanded universe. You, you guys don't give a shit about everything you just read for the last 20 years, do you? Yeah, because you know, the, 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 the original space jockey in, in Alien... When you look at it, it's, it's essentially like you, you can see the, where the where there was a chest burster yeah. uh, came out of it, and it it's essentially a fossilized uh, space jockey it's sitting yeah. in the chair. It's been there so long, and like that just adds so much scope and atmosphere to the entire film. Like, my God, this shit happened way before there was even like amoebas crawling on Earth. You know, like that oh yeah. Of, yeah, no, oh, Prometheus, oh, I, I have a special hatred in my heart for those two movies because they were not only bad movies, but they they retroactively ruined a franchise I love. Like, I, 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 I have to have horse blinders on. I'm just like, there's only alien aliens. There's nothing else, nothing else. Nothing I mean, I, I, I dislike any movie that tries to, like, explain stuff that doesn't need to be explained because the, when the original movies came out and it wasn't explained to you and it made them more creepy and scary... It's like, oh, let's explain everything. Let's explain the monsters in the dark that you don't see. Let, let's do all this shit. And, yeah, you don't need and r- Really, you didn't love Halloween Part 6 where they explained that he was part of a cult and he was, oh, he was a, a curse of thorn where he had to be... And he, he raped his own niece. And it's like, Jesus Christ, fuck off. Yeah. Now, do you guys know what, what other film series that we have that we failed to, to mention that actually coincided around the exact same time as all these other ones. It's a good one too. Tell uh, me. Tell me Jamie. Jamie you You're know. not you're not Jamie, but tell me anyway. Predator. <laughs> Pre- yeah, Predator. Pre- Predator. Oh, I'm interested in what you have to say about this because I may have a different opinion than you do. I see, you know, Predator and Predator well, like Predator I love that movie. What a what a great movie from start to finish. First Fucking Predator action. is fan- absolutely you know, fantastic. One liners all over the place. You know, stick around. Get Jesse, to the chopper. Jesse the Body Ventura. Oh, oh, he doesn't have time to bleed. I don't have time to bleed. Oh man, so great. I love the and helicopter then, gun was the coolest thing back in the eighties, mm-hmm. right? Uh, that movie is incredible. Yeah. Yeah, and then number two again, it, it's sort of taken that uh, that more action, blow them up big time type of feel. I would it. say underrated. I actually think mm-hmm. that is a pretty good movie. It is. Um, I, I think it tried to tell too much of the story at the end with like Danny Glover finding the ship and all that stuff. And ah, I, kinda, I like that. I like the idea that, yeah, these, yeah. these guys have been visiting us for like centuries and, yeah. you know. But, I you know, they, they like warmed it up a little bit, you know. It's yeah. Like, Oh, okay, I feel good about this. It's like, no, you're not supposed to feel good. Fucking people are dying. There, there should be fucking limbs flying all over the place. And then everything after that, it just all went fucking way off the rails. Yeah, the, the yeah. aliens versus predator shit yeah. was terrible. Yeah, I, I was liked terrible. I liked the um the uh Predators. Predators, yeah. I, I like that. I thought it was pretty I, I actually liked that movie too. I thought it was good. It was a bit of a retread sort of of the first movie where it's kind of like hey here's a bunch of tough guys in a jungle let's see what happens yeah um i I would have with adrian brody that just came out a few years ago yeah okay 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 yeah i've seen it yeah yeah i actually like that one i would have liked to see it with the original where apparently lawrence fishburne character was supposed to be arnold schwarzenegger yeah that didn't didn't work out for whatever reason um but i you know what i actually thought that movie was I'm not gonna say it was great. It wasn't as good as the first one, not by not even close. It wasn't even good as the second one, but I thought it was fun for what it was. Yep. Now, Aliens vs. Predator, the first and the second one were both fucking awful. Yeah, they were shit. And now there's a new Predator movie out. And that's good. Yeah, yeah, and it but, doesn't uh, look good. It doesn't well, look good. yeah, yeah. The trailer doesn't look very good at all. But I mean, it is Shane Black uh, writing it and. So it might have a chance. I get. I guess my problem with it is that uh, predators. Again, spoilers for anyone that hasn't seen it and doesn't get, and gives a shit. Is like 
oh, well, the big twist is that the old Predator is back. Oh, but there's new Predators, and they quickly kill the old Predator because they're so much tougher than the old one. Now in this one, it's like, oh, there's an ultimate Predator. So is he better than the the bigger Predators in the last movie, or is he less than that? Is he worse? Well, I'm I think, I'm I think the they're, best one. I think they're, I think, again, they're doing the Halloween thing where they're disregarding those films. It's like, those films don't exist. Yeah. So. I don't. I don't think you've earned the right to do that when there's that little films. In the Probably franchise. not. Yeah. Like, like Halloween has earned it because there's eight films in the original series with two different timelines, and then there's a remake series. At that point, Halloween has earned the right to just fuck say fuck it. We're just getting rid of this shit. Yeah. Here, there's like there's like two movies that I think most people would argue are at least decent. I think the first one's fantastic. I would argue the second one's at least decent, if not very very good. Um, I think it's very, very good. You may. I think agree. it is too. Um, and then I think the third one is a pretty decent movie as well. Uh, so I don't think they've earned the right to just disregard that if that's what they're going to do. Um, Predator we're... Predator Two has has fucking uh, Geraldo R- Rico Suave on the fucking soundtrack. That doesn't get you behind it. Predator Two has a girl <laughs> Bush in the movie, so that's, that's yeah. something. Even though that girl happens to be a porn star, so you can see a lot more of her if you want to. Terry Weigel, yeah. Wow, you actually knew the name. That's more than I knew. I just well, I knew she was she, a porn star. Because she wasn't a porn star at that point. She was just a B-movie actress who got nude in a lot of horror films. But... Oh, yeah? Huh. No, as, as, a, as a young developing child, when I watched that movie, probably eight or nine <laughs> years old, I, I quite appreciate that. I was like, oh, that's what a girl looks like down there. Fucking hitting that pause button like a motherfucker. Fucking oh, pause. <laughs> Eric Gilbert <laughs> says in the chat, based Leatherface guy in uh, Wisconsin during the fifties, flexible story to say the least. Yeah, just, you know they just took the the basics of Ed Gein and expanded it to something totally different. If we want to talk about a franchise, how about oh. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which possibly is one of the best horror movies of all time, and the first one. And then the second one. I know there's a lot of fans of the second one. I don't. I don't particularly like it. I like it um, a lot. And then the third and the fourth yeah, one. Yeah, then it really then, starts to fucking yeah nosedive. The, the remake, which I I thought the remake was okay, and then the be- this the beginning, which was not good. The the embarrassing one, which the Texas Chainsaw 3D, which I will I will not say is a good movie, but I found that one entertaining. But it's not a good movie. Uh, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll beg to differ on that one. That's okay. We can agree to disagree. Um, but, yeah, that is such a franchise that's just like, wow. Like, at least well, for, Sorry, go I ahead. I mean, Toby, Toby Hooper didn't want to make a sequel to it. Like, it was, it, Canon Films gave him a lot of cocaine and money to make a yeah. new film. And he was like, okay, well, fuck it. I'll, I'll, I'll totally, like dismantle my oh, first he, film and make oh, make a black comedy instead. Oh, he was so high on cocaine when he made that second movie. Jesus yeah. Christ, that Cause movie he, was cause so he, fun. Yeah, because he essentially like, he wanted the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre to actually be a comedy, but they, they sort of, they changed it like kind of last minute kind of thing and just made it a straight up horror movie. But he was like, okay, well, I'm going to do what I originally wanted to do in the first place if Canon Films is going to give me millions of dollars and a lot of cocaine. I'll, 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 I'll fuck. And uh, sadly, sadly, Canon uh, did the thing they usually do, whereas while I'm making the film, oh, by the way, Toby, we want to cut $2 million off your budget while you're still filming the film, you know, like... We're, we're gonna take a couple million views and funnel it into one of our other films. It's a thing Canon did frequently. My apologies. Yeah, whatever. And yeah, so so that film had a lot of problems financially, but I think it kind of works it just as a batshit crazy film. And that <laughs> film is the film that made Rob Zombie's career, basically, when you think about it, because that's the film Rob Zombie remade with uh, Host of a Thousand Corpses, essentially. Oh, I never actually, I never actually thought about it that way. That's Host of the Thousand Corpses is totally Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part Two, essentially. Oh, really? Really? Huh. I, I have, I've not seen House of a Thousand Corpses in at least ten years, probably longer than that. I always remember not. I thought House of a Thousand Corpses was okay. I like Devil's Rejects more. 
Oh, Devil's Rejects is the one where he actually got lucky and like made a really good film. <laughs> yeah, lucky. Yeah. Now, n- now, see here, 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 here's here. A, here's another thing that's gonna basically make you guys disregard any any movie opinion I have. I kind of like the Halloween remake, the first one. If you disregard the first portion of it, the first forty minutes or so is Michael Myers as a child. That's garbage. That should never have been in the movie. But once they actually got to him as an adult, I actually thought it was kind of a fun, more violent remake of the original. Not. Again, nowhere near as good as the original. The original is my favorite horror movie of all time. This is nowhere near as good as that. But I kind of found it to be a fun movie once he became an adult. And it was just like, hey, what if Michael Myers was just like an eight-foot-tall goon and just ripped people apart? Okay, this is kind of fun. It works. <laughs> just yeah, really cool. it, it works when you don't have the usual Rob Zombie redneck swearing at each other bullshit. Like, w- once you get past that, he does have a talent for making, like, really effective... Like just horror, like extreme horror violence kind of stuff, and I would argue the first, uh, I think it's like basically the first twenty minutes or so of Halloween Part Two that he did. I think that's actually brilliant. Like he was actually shooting for something that was actually kind of really fun. The way he was basically remaking the original Halloween Two. Yeah, as a well, dream. That... I, I like that. I thought that was pretty fucking cool. And then the rest that... of the movie is like. Uh, yeah, that yeah. was good. Whereas the rest of the movie probably made Halloween Eight look part look good because yeah, the rest of the movie the, was awful. But yeah, I agree with you. The hospital part was very cool in that movie. Yeah, I, th- I thought I thought okay, Rob Zombie, you got something going here. Oh no, here comes back your wife. Now we got a white horse running around. We got some Moody Blues playing, dude. Just give it up. You know, you know what? Going back to the early conversation, Halloween Two is actually an excellent horror movie. The only sin that movie does is it makes is it's the first one that reveals that Jamie is his sister. And yeah. if it wasn't for that, that movie would that like like this new sequel coming out would still have that movie in it. If it wasn't for that one fact, because that movie is awesome. Like you can, the biggest I guess the biggest other problem is that like you're kind of in a hospital. There aren't very many people in that hospital. But guess what? You have that nurse with a giant tit. She goes in the hot tub, and then mm-hmm. Michael Myers drowns her in the hot tub. What the fuck? Not that was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I mean, if if, if you rate it as um, like the way slasher films were at that point, that's like head over heels better than like the majority of slasher films from that year. Um, and you know, it's it's got the gore, it's got the nudity, it's got still got the tension and the atmosphere of the first film pretty much knocked down and yeah it's it's just the it demystifies michael myers to a certain extent because it gives them a motive even if the motive doesn't necessarily make sense it still gives them a motive and what made michael myers really scary in the first film was that nobody knew what his fucking yeah, motive yeah, was it's going to no it could it could happen to you it could happen to me but um no, but the, the other thing I love about that movie, it's got a proper ending where it's like the first movie is like, I shot him six times. Yeah. Oh, I shot he, him six times! But, he, but he's not there anymore. Well, you must have missed. That was from the second one. I know that. But at the end, it's like Loomis is in there with him and Michael Myers is slashing at him and Loomis opens the taps and fires the shots, blows up both his eyes so he's blind yeah. and then sets them both on fire. They're both dead. There's literally no way either one of them survived it. That is a proper ending where that franchise was done. And then they made Halloween 3, and it's like, no, we want Michael Myers back. Okay, Halloween 4, Return of Michael Myers. Loomis just got a little burn on his face. It's okay. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, apparently this new Halloween film, uh, from what I've been reading, uh, so it, it changes the ending slightly of the first Halloween film, where... Michael Myers does not disappear and get away after getting shot six times. Uh, he gets caught by the police. Mm. Like he, he might have disappeared from the lawn, you know, the final shot. And I oh, mean, oh, you say his name three times, and here he is. <laughs> and I, and I mean, one, one of the one of the biggest, you know, moments in the original Halloween, the, one of the scariest things about it is uh, he disappears from the lawn. And then you get all these shots around, yeah. you know, around the house and stuff, and yes. Michael's breathing or whatever. And it's like, oh shit, he's still out there. He's still. Like, fucking out there. You're like, you're working, and you're waiting for a shot of him like 
hiding somewhere where you can see him that they don't show you him and you're just like yeah uh, so, uh, so they uh, apparently the the new halloween film kind of erases that to a certain extent where yeah he disappeared from the lawn but he eventually got caught by the cops like right afterwards or something like no. that you know? Anyway, welcome Red Beard, and uh, thank you for coming in because we're going offline here in a second here. Yeah, because we know we know you're gonna be racist. Yeah, no, no, it's just the second yeah. coming of. Uh, did uh, by the way, the white guys, did we do we get any update on that case about Chris Peters killing all those women? No, uh, we didn't. But uh, I, you know, apparently, there are pickles left at every crime scene. Jesus, <laughs> oh, man. there's a revelation. Stay tuned, right. folks. <laughs> done, done, done. All right, thanks for watching, folks. We are heading offline uh, just because uh, Redbeard joining us means that it won't no longer be PG, even though Greg's been here. Yeah, old. Redbeard's got fucked things up. <laughs> By the way, hey, yeah. Redbeard, how you doing? Hey, man, thanks for having me and stuff. All right, yeah. it's been great having you on, and we'll talk to you folks later. Cheers. Goodbye. Peace out,